The first of the many newborn well visit is just around the corner. You are wondering what questions the pediatrician will ask and what you need to bring to the first appointment. You want to make sure you don't forget anything important. So spare a few minutes for me, moms and dads. This video is for you. Welcome to Mother Baby Central, your resource for great and practical information regarding pregnancy, postpartum, newborn care, and baby's first year of life. The first newborn visit happens three to five days after a discharge from the hospital. If there are any pertinent issues the doctor from the hospital is concerned about, they might want you to follow up with the pediatrician earlier than that. What are these issues? Usually it is the bilirubin level. The bilirubin level is expected to go up as the baby gets older, but it should still be in the scale where the number is still safe and can be managed at home. If the next day following the discharge is a weekend, they will most likely have you bring the baby to the hospital in the outpatient department for a serum bilirubin check or blood draw if they are concerned. Assuming there are no issues, while you are still in the hospital, they will ask you to call the pediatrician's office and make the first appointment and you will be advised by the neonatal nurse practitioner or the neonatologist, which is the baby's doctor, when the ideal day will be. The nurse will hand you the discharge paperwork and this contains all the vital information the pediatrician needs to know, um, like what happened during the hospital stay, as well as mom's prenatal labs, maternal history. It also includes the result of the hearing test, the test for critical congenital heart disease, the 24 hour and discharge bilirubin level, record of medicine given to the baby, erythromycin for the eyes, vitamin K injection, including hepatitis B if it was received or not, and the physical exam. Make sure you keep the discharge paperwork for the pediatrician in the diaper bag so you will not forget it later. By the way, this is the first of a seven-part series of the well visits done in the first year of life. So hang in there and stay tuned for the next six episodes so you will always come prepared. Know what to expect and make all the baby visits productive and all your concerns addressed. Every well baby visit has a pattern. The very first thing the medical assistant will do after checking you in at the front desk is getting baby measurements like weight, length, and head circumference. These measurements will be entered in a chart called the World Health Organization Growth Chart to know what base percentile your baby falls into. The baby's brain is growing, therefore the head measurement should reflect the growth happening. So this is a vital piece of information. Monitoring your baby's growth is the most important aspect of the well baby visits. Now normally, the baby's weight during this visit is still less than the birth weight. Moms and dads, this is normal. The baby should gain the weight back and should be at birth weight in two weeks of life. After checking the measurements, vital signs will be done, like the temperature, heart rate, and respiratory rate. Then the pediatrician comes in with the information gathered by the medical assistant. She will discuss with you the growth chart, what it means if your baby is growing appropriately, this is the first visit after birth, so there's probably little changes from the previous one done at the hospital. Now don't panic if some of the measurements are off a little bit, especially the length. It does not mean your baby got shorter if the length is less than what was the original one. Two different people measured it, so some discrepancy can happen. After that, parents will be asked how everything is going and if there are any concerns and address them. This should be a very interactive conversation. This visit is not only for the baby's well-being. The pediatrician will also ask how the family is coping with a new baby. How is mom doing? Are there concerns for postpartum depression? Is she constantly feeling down? Is she bonding well with the baby? Does she need to see her OB doctor sooner than scheduled? Does she need to join a lactation support group or see a lactation consultant for breastfeeding help? Are there other siblings in the house and how are they dealing with a new baby? How is dad coping with everything? Does the family need assistance with food? How is the living situation? Parents, there are available resources out there, so make sure if any of this is happening, let the doctor know so she can point you to the right direction. Next thing the doctor address is nutrition and feeding. 
the doctor will ask you how often you are feeding your baby. For breastfeeding mothers, how many times in a day and how long the baby stays in the breast. Remember, the baby has to eat 8 to 12 times in 24 hours, roughly every 2 to 3 hours or by demand. You will be advised to supplement your baby with vitamin D drops, 400 international units per day. Breastfeeding moms eat a healthy diet, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean protein, and continue taking your prenatal vitamins and iron supplements if needed. Parents, do you know when your baby is showing signs of hunger and how to know if your baby is full? Any concerns at all with breastfeeding? These questions are discussed during that well baby visit. For bottle feeding babies, how often the baby is fed and how much formula the baby is taking. Make sure you know how to prepare the formula safely. The baby should be eating around 2 ounces of formula every 3 hours. If the baby still looks hungry, you can give a few more but increase it gradually though. Does the baby speed up a lot? When you are bottle feeding, hold your baby where the head is higher than the body. Do not feed while the baby is lying on the crib and propping the bottle. Nope, incorrect, no, no. Now, whatever method you are feeding your little one, make sure you are burping in between and at the end of the feeding. Then the doctor will ask how many wet and poopy diapers you change in one day. You need to know and be specific with your answers. So I advise you to write the feedings you do at home and the diaper changes. What is the color of the poop? If you see any strange colors, ask the doctor if it's normal. You can take a picture too so you can show it on the visit. If you are loving our video for today so far, please click the like button and share it with your friends who you think will find value in our content. What do you think is a normal behavior of a baby at this age? Baby should remain awake during feeding times. The baby is alert, eyes wide open, looks around, cries when uncomfortable, but easily calms down to voices. The baby can see you at a certain distance, around 6 to 12 inches away, so hold your baby closer when you are talking to him. When you do tummy time, the baby can lift the head briefly and the starter reflex is still present. You will notice the baby's hands is always in a fist. These are all normal. The routine newborn care will be reviewed as well, like cord care, circumcision care if applicable, bathing, swaddling, frequent hand washing, taking temperature, avoiding extreme temperatures, tummy time, hours of sleep, and all the other good stuff. Last but not the least that will be discussed is safety. The doctor will discuss the use of the car seat when traveling at all times. It's not just using it, but using it properly, making sure the straps are nice and snug, the base should be installed in the car, no extra accessories in the car seat to hold the head steady. If it does not come when you purchase the car seat, it doesn't belong there. Safe sleep, making sure your baby sleeps alone in the crib, flat on the back. If you have not watched my video about SIDS or Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, check my playlist and you can find it under Baby's First Year of Life. Never leave your baby alone in the car. And parents, use seat belt when driving. Do not drink and drive and no smoking allowed. Know what an emergency situation is and when to call 911. The last part of the visit is a physical exam where the doctor performs a thorough assessment on your baby. Ideally, the baby should be calm and quiet for this. And anything that is found abnormal, the doctor will discuss it with you and will plan for any follow-up or referral as needed. If your little one did not receive the hepatitis B vaccine at the hospital, it will be given on this visit and done towards the very end of the consultation. Before you leave, Make an appointment for the one-month visit or earlier if the doctor is concerned about the weight. But most likely, you will come back just for a weight check if that is so, and not necessarily to see the pediatrician. Also, don't forget to ask how you can reach the pediatrician if you have immediate concerns anytime, especially after office hours. This whole visit normally takes 20 to 30 minutes, depending if there are more issues happening then it can be a little bit longer. So there you go, moms and dads. Your first newborn visit is completed. Please drop a comment below and share your experience with me. 
I would love to hear all about it. Click on the subscribe button too if you find value in our today's topic. Happy watching!